is, this is what's so fascinating about you and I. We have been called to be ministers of the reconciliation. In fact, I'm seeing this, all these papers up here, the Evantel and, and all the resources for sharing the gospel. You and I are called to be professional, lifelong gospel sharers. Now, it doesn't mean we're all evangelists. You know that and you've been through or you're going to go through the spiritual gifts in 1 Corinthians 12 and all the other passages I have them. There is a spiritual gift of evangelism, of evangelists. They are a gift to the church. I can tell you I'm not one of those. Do you know how I know? Because it's hard to share the gospel. When you're not an evangelist, you don't just live and breathe, can't wait to go to the laundromat and find someone folding their clothes and saddle up next to them and say, hey, let me tell you, about Christ, and, and you start into the gospel. For, the, for most people, we're not evangelists. We do the work of sharing the gospel. But you know what we're supposed to do? Pray for divine appointments. And that's what it's all about. And for me, I mean, I, I like Starbucks. Anybody like Starbucks? Come on. It should be called five bucks, not Starbucks, because it's five bucks, you know, for one drink. But I remember, I went into Starbucks and I noticed this guy that was my barista at Starbucks in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and he's the one that you know, made the drinks and slides them across the counter to you. And, you know, tries to read it and goes, you know, whatever it is, and looks at your name and passes it over. And so, the first time he did it, what I noticed is, when he pushed my cup across the counter toward me, that's the only time I saw his eyes. You know, he was busy doing his thing. But he would go venti flat white. And in that moment, when I saw his eyes, let me see, anybody wearing yellow? Well, that yellow drink right there, that drink holder, can you hold it up right there? That's what color the pupils, I mean the, the whites, we call them the white of your eyes, uh, whatever that's called, the vitreous whatever. But his whites of his eyes, were that color. Do you know what that means? It means his liver was failing. That's called hyperbilirubinemia, where they turn yellow and then orange. And so I said, Lord, I'd like to share the gospel with this guy, but I'm gonna make a deal with you. Now, don't make deals with the Lord, <laughs> but I made a deal with him. And I said, Lord, you know that it's kind of hard, and this is the busiest Starbucks in Tulsa. It's the number one volume. I've never been in here without a line of 15 people in front of me and 15 people behind me. It's one of those terrible Starbucks. And I said, but if when I come in and I give my order and I wait for him to pass that drink to me, if no one's behind me in line, I'm gonna talk to him because I don't like to hold up the line because then people get angry and they don't like you, know, you witnessing and everything. So I went in, 25 people in front of me, and I thought, oh, I won't have to witness today. And so I was just going through the line and you know, checking my email. When I got up to order, I went, oh no. <laughs> it was the first time, I've been going there for about 12 months. There was no one behind me. Oh, I was so excited, I got my track ready. I had actually had the track in my pocket you know, I prayed over it, said, Lord, if you allow that guy to, I want to share the gospel with him. So I had the little track, pulled it out of my wallet. I had learned his name, you know, they wear those tags. So I knew it was Daniel. And so Daniel made my flat white and he was sliding it across and he looked up into my eyes with his bright orange eyes now. And I said, Daniel, I'd never talked to him before. You know, he went, yeah. I said, Daniel, I said, this is a gospel track. I said, I wanna give it to you. It's about how Jesus Christ died in your place for your sins. And I wanna tell you one thing, and someone came through the door. You know, you couldn't do the two minute gospel presentation. I was doing the 22 second one. I said, Daniel, you're gonna wake up one day in hell. I said, the direction of your life, your sins are going to bury you in hell. You need to read this. And I handed him the gospel track. His orange eyes got this big. He just looked at me, you know, like a deer in the headlights. Well, I was so happy and I drank my drink and I, I thought, I'm gonna come back tomorrow and follow up. So I came back, that was Tuesday. I came back Wednesday. Daniel wasn't there. 
He always worked Wednesdays. I came back Thursday, Daniel wasn't there. Friday, Daniel wasn't there. The next week on Monday, I went in and I said to the barista, I said, where's Daniel? And they said, that's what we're asking. Where's Daniel? I said, what do you mean? They said, last Tuesday, he walked out of Starbucks at about two in the afternoon. He walked right out the back door and he's never come back to work. I thought, he probably overdosed. He probably's dead in the alley behind the Starbucks. I was gonna go look, you know, and see if he was laying there dead. They said, we've looked, we've called, he's gone. I prayed and prayed and thought, Lord, I should have said more, I should have said more, I should have said sooner, he died. One year later, I was back in that Starbucks and I was reading my Bible and working and I heard clink, clink, and I looked up and I saw spiky shoes that were black. I saw spiky pants. I saw chains. I looked up. It was the same stapled Daniel, only he, he went like this and he leaned over my table and he says, I've been looking for you for a year. He said, you scared the hell out of me. He said, you didn't explain that paper to me. He said, you just gave it to me. He said, and I went to everybody at work and said, does anybody understand this? Does anybody understand this, this track? And nobody did. So he said, I left. And he said, I walked down the street of Tulsa and everybody I met, I said, do you understand this? Someone told me that if I don't do something, I'm gonna wake up in hell and I do not wanna wake up in hell. And he said, he finally went to a storefront weightlifting church called Guts. Everybody had metal and, you know, they were all just like him. Only they were born again Christians and they led him to Christ. And as he looked at me, he had the biggest, whitest eyes you've ever seen. And he had absolutely repented of all that stuff he was in. And the Holy Spirit had made him a new creation. Mm -hmm. 